In this video, using Apple Motion, we're gonna recreate Cleo Abrams' countdown clock she uses for her sponsored segments in her videos. Now this clock doesn't just need to be used for sponsored bits, it could be used for workouts, live streams, pretty much anything you can think of that needs a countdown. Also, if you're a patron, you can download the project file and install it for Final Cut Pro and use it in your videos right now. Go ahead and open up Apple Motion. You should be greeted by the project browser. If you're not, you can always go up to file, then select new from project browser. For this particular project, we want it to be a final cut title. I'm gonna select the final cut title option, then coming over here to the right side, we're going to want to set our duration to whatever the length of this countdown clock is that we want, plus one second. So for example, if we wanted a 30 second countdown clock, we could go ahead and set this to be 30. From there, we'll go ahead and push open. Whenever you open up a title project, it should look exactly like this. You'll have a title background layer and a type text here layer. Let's go ahead and delete both of those because those will not be necessary for this particular project. The first thing I wanna create is the circle, which is being erased slowly over time. Let's go ahead and find our rectangle tool here and to the right of that, you'll see this down arrow. Clicking on that, you can see we have the circle. I'm gonna click and drag anywhere in this view it doesn't really matter, we're gonna reset it later. And I'm also going to hold shift, which is going to make this perfectly symmetrical. You can make this as large or as small as you want. I recommend making it pretty large and then maybe rescaling it when you're over in Final Cut Pro. That's looking pretty good to me. Let's jump on over into the inspector and go to the properties of this circle. Making sure that the circle is selected, we can find the position parameters. We can right click on that parameter and then select reset parameter and now our circle will be directly in the center. After that, we need to make this so it's just a thin line that's being erased. Let's go on over into the shape settings. In here, you'll see that we have the options for our fill, which we can change the color on, but we also have options for the outline. So let's go ahead and enable our outline, but disable the fill. So we are now just left with this really thin line. Now it's completely up to you how thick or thin you want this line to be. Let's go ahead and just drag that width up. I happen to like how 75 looks, but again, this is completely up to your taste. Now, we want this circle to slowly erase. One way to do that would be to come down to this first point offset, and you'll see that as I drag this up, that circle is slowly being erased. We could add keyframes and animate that way, but motion has a really great parameter behavior for this, and it's called the right on parameter. So with our circle selected, we'll go into behaviors, go down to shape, and then select right on. Immediately, our circle circle will vanish and you'll see that the circle is slowly being drawn on for the entire duration of our project. However, we don't want it to be drawing on, we want it to be erasing. Let's go over to the shape outline settings. We can change it from draw over to erase. So now over the duration of our entire project, this circle will slowly be erased. And what's really cool about this parameter is we could completely change the direction we're going. So right now the direction is forward, let's go ahead and reverse that and now it will erase in the other direction. So that gives you a bit of flexibility there. You could also change the speed of it from constant over to one of these easing options if you wanted. However, for this particular project, I happen to like how constant looks. Now, one thing I'm not particularly crazy about is these rounded edges. You might like them for your project, but for me, I want to match Cleo Abrams look as closely as we possibly can. So let's go on over into the shape settings and change the end caps. The start cap here is set to round, we'll just set that down to none. And the end cap is also set to round, so we'll set that to none. So now we have sharp edges on our circle and everything is slowly erasing as it should. With our circle in place, it's time to add our text in the middle. Now Cleo Abrams just has an asterisk and add, so we could go ahead and do that. And then in just a little bit, I'll show you how to upgrade this with some numbers. So we'll go ahead and select our text tool. You can get that with T and then we can click here in the center of our project. Project. Then I'm just gonna type in asterisk add. From there, we can push command A to select all of the text and we can scale that up using the size parameter. I also want the alignment on this to be centered. 
so we can change that right there. Still not quite large enough, so let's just keep on scaling that up until we're happy. 370 seems to be working for me. Then from there, let's select our arrow tool. With that selected, we can click and drag the words add directly into the center of our project. That seems to be working great. Now it's time to adjust the colors of our circle. And just to make things a little bit more apparent, I'm going to show the transparency of the backdrop. Let's come up to these render settings here off to the left side of render and select transparent. You can also get that with shift T. It's a little hard to see stuff, but we'll fix that momentarily. Firstly, you'll notice that Cleo Abrams has a nice dark border outline around everything. So let's go ahead and recreate that. We'll go over to the group settings, which contains both the add text and the circle outline. Selecting that group, let's just rename this to be countdown clock. And then we can go on up to filters, go down to border, and then we'll locate the stroke filter. That is going to add this red stroke on top of everything. We can adjust the width if we want to. I'm actually pretty happy with the width that it has at this moment. And let's set the color of that to be black. Next, we want the circle to have that nice green color that Cleo Abrams used. So to copy it exactly as she has it, I'm actually just gonna import a screenshot I grabbed from one of her videos. So I'll push Command I to import, then I'll locate that file, and we can just push import. So now we have a nice little cutout of it here in the top left, and we can grab these colors directly. Selecting our circle, let's find the brush color. I'm gonna go ahead and select the eyedropper tool just to the left of that, and then we'll come over here and we'll grab the color of the outline. We also have our text here, which we want to be the same color. So we'll just jump on into the appearance settings. And then from there, we can find the face and change the color over to that same option. Another thing you might notice with Cleo Abrams' little countdown clock is it has this lovely shadow. So let's go ahead and add that in. We could add the shadow individually to each element, but an easier way is to use the group that we've already pre-created. So it contains everything and that shadow will be cast from the text and more importantly, Importantly, it's going to include that stroke outline that we added to the objects. Let's go on over into the properties and you'll see the drop shadow. I'm gonna press on show to see more. Then we can go ahead and check this box next to drop shadow to enable it. From there, we can drag up the distance. Now, Cleo Abrams is going down to the bottom left corner. So let's adjust our angle to be that same direction. Next, you'll notice that the opacity is at 100%. So we'll just drag that all the way up. So it's a nice, solid color. Notice that it's a sharp line. It has no blur. So let's drag the blur down to zero. And finally, we want to match the same colors. So we'll grab our eyedropper tool and grab the color off of the Cleo Abrams option here. That add text is a little bit small. So I might jump into the text options and just drag it up even a little bit more. 450 is looking pretty solid. So a last bit of cleanup is to go ahead and either delete or to hide this screenshot that we originally used. Now we have a beautiful countdown clock and what's super great is because we haven't added in any sort of timing markers with inside of Apple motion this timer is going to update based on the duration that it is in Final Cut Pro so for example if I were to bring this countdown timer into Final Cut and set it to be only 10 seconds it would take only 10 seconds for this whole countdown clock to finish or if we were to set it to 10 minutes it would take the entire duration of 10 minutes to get this animation all the way through so this is super cool as it dynamically adjusts to whatever your project needs over in Final Cut Pro. But what if we want to take this to the next level? What if we want to add in numbers that are counting down over the duration of the project? Well, fortunately, that's super simple inside of Apple Motion. But really quick, I just wanted to take a couple seconds. I just launched my Apple Motion Masterclass. So if you're interested in learning way more about Apple Motion and becoming an advanced user in this software, you can check that out using the links down below. Plus I have a discount code down there for you as a thank you for watching this video. With that being said, let's add in the numbers. To add in our numbers, we'll need to jump over into our library. We'll locate the generators and you'll see the text generators. In here, we'll find the numbers generator. And all we need to do is just drag this into the same group that contains everything else. That means it's dynamically going to already have that outline applied and the nice drop shadow effect. I'm going to hide the add text. Then we'll go to the inspector, go to the format settings and drag up the scale on this text. 
450 is looking pretty good, then we can change the alignment on it. And something else that I want to change is the anchor point because right now the anchor point is down here at the bottom. Let's go over to the property settings and locate the anchor point. I'm just gonna drag along the Y axis until we're in the center of our number. That way, as we scale up and down, that number is going to be scaling from that center anchor point, which is super handy. Now we can just click and drag this number into its proper place. By default, we can see that these numbers are already pre-animated, but they're going to a number that makes no sense for our project. So let's go on over into the text generator settings and locate the generator. You'll notice that the end number here is set to 1,860. It might be different depending on your project if you did it shorter or longer. We want this to count down to zero. So let's go ahead and just type in zero. And then for our starting number, we want this to be the number that the countdown clock starts on. So let's say we're making a 30 second timer. We'll just type in 30. Now, if you remember at the very beginning of this project, we set this project to be 31 seconds instead of 30. And there's a very important reason for that because we are counting the number zero as its own number. If we were to set this timer to only be 30 seconds and start at the number 30, all of our seconds would be misaligned. They wouldn't quite be one full second. So by adding an extra second, that enables us to look at zero as its own number, thus making it so everything is perfectly aligned. But You'll also notice that our countdown circle is not quite lined up with that zero seconds because this countdown is actually 31 seconds and we want it to only be 30. To fix that, let's go on down to our right on parameter here at the bottom of our timeline. And with it selected, we'll just go to the 30 second mark and I actually recommend going back one frame to 29.59 and pushing O. That is because motion actually puts the frame one frame ahead of the playhead. So if I were to zoom in way on this, you can see that this goes one frame past our playhead, thus making it end right at the 30 second mark. Finally, the last thing we need to do is go ahead and update the color of this text. With the numbers selected, we can go to appearance and change that color using the eyedropper to be the exact same color. And that is looking great. So now we have a 30 second timer that will count all the way down to zero seconds and it will dynamically update for however long we want it in Final Cut Pro. But let's say that in Final Cut, we want to make this a 60 second timer instead. Well, let's go ahead and publish that as a parameter. Jumping over into our numbers, we can go to the generator settings and locate the start parameter. We'll click on this down arrow and this allows us to publish over to Final Cut. So now if the user wants to, they can change the duration of this countdown clock to however many seconds they would like. From there, we're gonna push Command S to save or to publish. We can just call this the countdown timer and then we can put it into whatever category we like. I'll go ahead and throw this into my tutorials category and then I will push publish. So here we are in Final Cut Pro. We'll just go into our titles here and locate the category that we put it in. From there, I can go ahead and just drag this down on the timeline. And you'll notice looking here, our countdown clock is 31 seconds, which means it will properly count down to zero. So if I push play, that's going to play out beautifully. But let's say the user only wants this to be 10 seconds. Well, I could push Control D to change duration and I'm going to push 11, zero, zero. So that will come out to 11 seconds and zero frames and push enter. So now if I push play, you'll see the animation is much faster. The numbers don't line up appropriately. We'll just go over to our title settings and find the start number that we published and change this over to 10. And so now we have a properly animated 10 second countdown clock, which is super awesome. Let's say we want this to be 60 seconds, just change this over to 6100. From there, we can set this to be 60, and now it will be appropriately animated for a 60 second long animation. So that is how to recreate the countdown clock timer. If this video was helpful to you, consider pressing that like button and consider subscribing. Also, don't forget that I just launched my Apple Motion Masterclass. There's links down below, so make sure you check that out. Thank you so much for watching this video, and with that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.